Okay, this is video seven on 2D plotting. Before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about evaluation rules, um, but we can do this using Maple. Okay, the idea of evaluation rules mostly is the idea of Maple does everything within brackets before it does the operation outside of brackets. So if this is a function f1 of x, going to be passed some thing into x and then substituted into this expression. And here's f2 of x and it's going to do the same thing. Before f2 does anything, f1 has to do something. And before f1 can do anything, my expression or my x has to have whatever content it has. So my expect will eventually be passed into f1 and then once F1 does all its work, then that will be passed into F2. And that is the order in which expressions are done. Hence, the output is something that looks like that. Now, we can do it the same way. I could say F1 of F2 of my express is f1 of f2 of my express x back okay and when you do that one you can see that you get a different output right do everything on the inside before you do the operation on the outside i should note that sometimes this leads to actual um, evaluations before you really want them to be evaluated. And if you look in the document, there's a discussion of that at the end. Okay, so now let's actually do some plotting and you'll see where this evaluation rules come into play. So basically we're gonna restart and to plot any expression such as x squared plus three times x plus one, you tend to just write that out. Now, one, one can do is just to leave it and let Maple figure out what it looks like. What I tend to do is to give it a range uh, to make that plot. So here I'd say, I want my range instead of from minus 10 to 10, maybe I want my range from minus five to five. And it will make a plot that looks like this. If you need to limit the vertical axis, okay, then all you need to do is, and I'll just copy and paste this part, is there's a horizontal range. Now we add a vertical range, maybe from 0 to 10. And now it will look just like that, cutting out everything below 0. Okay. Plotting functions is not a problem. For example, f of y, let's define that as sine of y squared. Okay, and now we can just simply plot f of y from, in fact, y equals zero to pi escape, oops, point pi, pi escape, here we go. And again, I can put my vertical limits in and make them look like that. Of course, y is not distinctive. I can also plot my function, but call the variable that it's going through z minus pi pi and it will look something like that. Okay. If we want, we can even plot multiple things on the same graph. For example, I could plot open square bracket, both f of, and maybe this case, x, and my expression, uh, which we have up here, which I'll say is x squared plus 3 times x minus 4. So now I've given it a list of things to plot and plot it from x equals minus three to three. And it looks something like that. 
let's give some ourselves some more room to do some plotting here. Sometimes you'll get an expression that looks like this. For example, f of x colon equals a times the sine of a times x uh, over x squared. And you would like to plot it. Well, the problem is if you try to plot f of x, it can't determine because it doesn't know anything about a. So what you do is you make an expression. And you basically evaluate your function or expression where you give a some value. In this particular case, maybe I'll give it equal to the value of one. So now that's the expression that I'm going to do. And now I can plot f a one. And it looks at something like this. One thing that did get introduced in this particular problem is a discontinuity. You can see that right here. Fortunately, you can tell Maple that this discontinuity exists by saying discont equals true, and it will remove the discontinuity. Okay. But basically, the idea is again, use evaluate if you don't have all the constants because you can't plot unless you're down to a single cons a single variable. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to what's called parametric curves. This comes up a lot when you want to plot two functions against each other where they're a function of a single variable. So we're going to plot x of t and y of t. Also in this example, I'm going to note that I can later define what v0 of x and v0 y are. And for this particular calculation, of course, we need to put some numbers in. This is where, again, the evaluation function is quite useful. So here's our set of sample values for g, theta, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that means actually our x value, okay, x values are equal to evaluate x of t using our sample values. And our y values are evaluate y of t using our sample values. And that was the, what we're actually going to plot. Now we're ready for the actual plotting of it. So in this case, I have two expressions, not two functions, but we simply plot open square bracket, x value and y value. If we were to simply plot from zero to three, This would produce two separate functions. One is the x and one is the y. But that's not what I want to plot. And that would be plotted versus t. What I want to plot is x versus y. I want to see how x is changing as y is changing. So now instead I plot, looks like exactly the same technique, x val, y val, but now I put the t inside the square brackets. And now this shows this is what's on the x-axis, that's the first term. This is what's on the vertical axis, that's the second term. And it's plotting these two numbers as t goes by. Again, this is very useful in kinematics or dynamics. Our next example is to how do you point, uh, plot a bunch of points? So a point, if you see here, is really a list containing two values, the horizontal value and the vertical value, the x and the y. So I have recorded four points. Then what I really want to do is I want to plot all four points. So I make them in, put them into a list. And now I have a list of points. And when I hit enter, this is what it looks like. Of course, you could have written this all in one line. If you were to simply plot this list O points, they would look like that because what it's trying to do is it's drawing lines from each point to the next point. And this might be neat if you'd want to make a star pattern. Most of the time we're interested is actually to plot the points separately, okay? There we need a style which is of point, not of line. So we want to plot our list O points with a style equal to point. Now, if we just do this, you'll see there are the points, but they're actually quite small. 
So I'm going to add the fact that I want the symbol of these points to be a solid box. There are lots of options. You can have a solid circle. I want the symbol size to be larger. So we'll make it 30. And of course, what we can do is we can make a color. I'll shift enter here. Color equals dark magenta. And now we have much larger points on our plot. If you want, here is an opportunity to try some practice problems related to plotting multiple functions on a single graph or even a parametric plot here. Here's an example of doing data points. So stop the video and then see if you can do these examples and uh, we'll look at the solutions next. And there are the solutions. There's one. There's two, there's three, and there's four. Going back to our plots here, I should point out that if you click on a plot, you can do things such as resize it, drag that out, and that's what it looks like if it's larger. In addition, it has a plot options toolbar, so you can add all sorts of things. Actually, let's look at this plot. This is kind of an interesting one. Um, you can change it to a one by one scale, and that will make sure it's a scale is constrained. One of the most useful ones is this projection one. I click on the drop down menu, I select the bottom one, and then wherever I go, oops, it, it will pick out those points. Let's do this on another example. Oops, actually, let's not. Also, I should point out there are a slew of pl plot options. We've already looked at a couple, like is how to change our style of our points and how to change the color. But again, there are things like thicknesses, how to control the axes and the scaling, how to put labels on a plot, even adjust the label direction. Um, in the documents, there are all sorts of different examples of so making all sorts of different plots with uh, adjustments as much as you want. Finally, sometimes what you do is you make multiple plots and you actually then want to lay the both plots onto the same display. Here's an example where I have started with a restart and then I have a function and I'm going to plot that function and it looks like this. I've actually assigned the plot to the term F plot. I'll do the same thing with g of x, and I have two plots here, one for f of x and one for g of x. In order to put both plots on the same display as written, you type plots da colon dash display, in fact, you see, notice it, open parentheses, because you're gonna, it's a function, you're gonna pass it, and then you just list what you're going to pass. f plot, I want to plot, and I want g plot, on the same thing. And now we'll put both plots onto the same graph. In the example, I actually show you a little bit how to use an arrow um, to find, to point out the maximum point up here. I think that's probably it for now. Um, go ahead and look at the troubleshooting and we'll see you at the next video.